Alrighty, let's unbox Blood of Gondor. Next pack in the Against the Shadow cycle. Boom. There we go. Give me a spirit hero. I'm really hoping for a spirit hero. I don't think we're going to get one because we just got Pippin. And Pippin is not necessarily what I would consider a playable spirit hero. But here we are. Also, I keep forgetting to read all the flavor text. Oh, well. Okay. Uh, come on, spirit. Let's go. I do wish... Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, so I did really want to run Outlands. I had a whole Outlands deck built. I ran it against this scenario, or this previous scenario, uh, Assault on Esgiliath a couple of times. But I ended up scrapping that just because it wasn't... It's a very slow but very powerful deck. And this... It ended up being a, a fairly quick rush strategy. So... Ended up scrapping that. But I do want to play it again. I just like I need to find something that it works out well. Alrighty, let's see what we got. Hey, we got a spirit hero. Let's go. Uh, <laughs> okay, so an eight threat spirit hero, a two one two three, uh, Caldra Caldara, Gondor. So Gondor traded, which is great because we we're seeing a lot of Gondor synergies recently. Action: discard her to put. Okay. <laughs> okay, discard her to put one spirit ally from your discard pile into play for each other hero you control with a printed spirit resource icon. Limit once per game. That's really interesting. That's really, really interesting. I don't... There aren't that many spirit... Well, maybe we get to see a couple more spirit allies that that makes sense to do in this pack. But we also... If you're running spirit and you're running... Like, you would probably want to run a mono spirit deck to run this to get your two allies out. Then you probably have the money to play uh, whatever the card is that brings the hero back. So you can... The, the five cost card with Gandalf and they're like looking off into the distance. I don't remember the card's name right now, but you could get her back. So you would have to... <clears throat> It would have to be worth more than five resources. I don't know. I'll have to take a look at all the spirit allies that I have to see if there's any good targets for that. It's interesting nonetheless. And it's also another spirit hero that with a with a fairly solid stat line. So uh okay, okay. We got Squire of the Citadel, another Gondor ally. Uh after Squire of the Citadel leaves play, add one resource to Gondor Heroes resource pool. Alrighty, yeah, I yeah, I like it. I like that. We got Tone of the Anatar. So this is probably going to be the book like we've seen for spirits and tactics so far. Uh, so attached to a leadership hero. Uh, reduce the cost to play the Tone by one for each hero you control with a printed leadership. Discard this to play any uh, leadership events in your discard pile as if it was in your hand. Then place that event on the bottom of your deck. Yep. Nice. Hey, we got another Rohan ally. Uh, Guthoff. So Rohan, uh, three costs one, one, two, two. Okay, so mediocre stat line. There's at least one Rohan hero in play. Lower the cost to play. Oh, that's cool. So he becomes a two cost if there's a Rohan. If there's at least one Gondor hero in play, he gains Sentinel. Not hey, good morning, Uncle Dazzle. How you doing? Um, Gondor. And he gains Sentinel, which does not really help too much in a solo game. How are you doing? How are you doing, Uncle Dazzle? We we finished up our, our quest and we're on to unboxing now, which is fun. That's what I'm doing today. I'm unboxing. I'm unboxing this and I'm going to film a video for my the board game channel that I run. That is just like I've been collecting boxes for like a month or two. And I'm just going to unbox like the 10 board games that I have. <laughs> Well, okay. I love the art in this one. That's really cool. So this is the hammer stroke. Love the name too. Encounter action. Engage each enemy in play. Um, hmm. multiplayer. It could be really, really cool. Not quite sure if I love that in solo. Probably not in solo. Doing good. I only own the revised core set for Lord of the Rings. Love seeing unboxings, though. Nice. Yeah. 
it, it's really good. I love I love Lord of the Rings. The more I play Lord of the Rings, the more I kind of start to think that this may actually be my favorite of of the three, just because it it tickles that part of my brain that just requires like a lot of like deck building, and it's I I, I love Lord of the Rings, but. My, my cop-out answer is always it's my favorite is the one that I'm currently playing. But did do you enjoy the, the Lord of the Ring game? You have the revised core. Have you played it? Have you have you dived into it at all? Alrighty. We've got Emery. So here's the, one of a target for... Uh, is it Kaldara? Yeah, Kaldara. So a three cost unique ally, a one, one, two, two. And then as an action, we can discard the top three cards of our deck to put Emery into play from your hand under any player's control. Then if any of the discarded cards had the tactics, lore or leadership sphere, discard Emery. <laughs> nice. Uh, really running us into that mono, mono strategy. It's, I mean, that's... I, I don't even know if I'd ever do that because if you're running a mono deck she's not that she's not that she's if you're running a mono deck she's not that expensive to get out right so it's three resources which is effectively just one round and so I, you know what after, after we finish up the unboxing we'll thumb through our, our spirit spirit allies real quick just to kind of see if there's any good target here I like it, but it's only played it twice. You mostly play with your 10 year old daughter and it's a good bit. It is, it is significantly harder than Marvel. There, there's just a lot that you have to keep up with. There's a lot of steps and it can get really tedious pretty quickly. So that, that makes, that makes sense. Alrighty. Uh, we got children of the sea, a zero cost spirit event. Yeah. That, that guy right there. Uh, choose a Sylvian or Noldor ally you control. That ally gets plus two uh, willpower until the end of the phase. At the end of the phase, shuffle that ally into its owner's deck if it is still in play. Uh, I don't know. That, that one's also not a hit for me necessarily, but I do feel like there could be some, some synergies that I'm just not seeing quite yet. Marvel keeps her attention really well. Oh, yeah. It has to, right? I mean, it's just, it's so fast paced and just so exciting that that's cool. I love Marvel. I love them all. They're so, they're all just great games. Uh, we got Anborn. So this is a four cost lore. I need to dive back into lore. I feel like I've been neglecting lore recently with the buff that tactics has gotten. So. Anaborn. This is a Gondor Ranger. A 4 cost 1-3. So a big fighter one. Exhaust Anaborn to return one trap card from your discard pile into your hand. Huge. So I love... Oh, and we got another trap card too. I I'm going to run some lore stuff because the trap cards just are too enticing for me. You're recently given the old core set of Arkham, but you haven't tried it yet. Nice. Yeah, I, I like Arkham. The one thing that I will say and about Arkham is that the core set is not bad it has but arkham horror has the biggest improvement from the core set to its expansions if that makes sense so like the core set isn't bad however compared to like dunwich like the next couple expansions the core set does not even compare it it is that kind of night and day and so um i know it's a big kind of ask but it's I, it's hard to judge Arkham without trying the expansion, which is stuff. What would I recommend starting with? Um, you've been getting around to watching some of your Arkham before you try it out. Start with Dunwich. So they've started doing all the repackaging for the older cycles. And I, th I think the current plan is to run through and recycle everything. So they've done the, re the repackaging of Dunwich Horror as well as Carcosa. And so Dunwich is incredible that's the one that i'm running through currently right now with professor meg and i did a solo run through with it um done which is incredible um and you can there, there are two paths to go if you're not sold on the game you probably could buy just the the deluxe expansion 
which is um how they used to repackage it but if if you if if um if you are okay with spending the money i recommend not doing that and going with the repackaged stuff which is a it's two boxes one of it is the campaign and one of it is all of the investigator cards and so if you are interested i would in only one of them i would go with the campaign um the investigator cards are awesome it has a lot of stuff that you can do with your like hero or investigator but the the i love that they separated it out so if you don't want any more investigator cards you can dive right into the campaign and it's just a big box so like this is the carcosa one and so there's this one and this guy so it comes in two boxes identical to this i bought dunwich before they announced this but like here's the campaign and then here's all the investigator cards so you don't need to buy both of them to enjoy it but if you're gonna only pick one pick the campaign because this is the one that gives you the story yeah. but it's called uh dunwich legacy the dunwich legacy is the is the big name for it Oh, my fan keeps pushing it off. <laughs> okay, we got another trap card. We got Poison Stakes. So play Poison Stakes into the staging area. Um, if unattached, attach Poison Stakes to the next eligible enemy that enters the staging area. At the end of the round, deal two damage to the attached enemy. That's sick. That's sick. That's awesome. You like your deck building options? I think they'll get me for both. Yeah. I, and like, it comes with a lot of cards. Like it come the Carcosa one came with 205 player cards. So it's just, it's a, it's a really good investment and a really good, uh, bang for your buck there. And so, um, and also some of my favorite classes come out of this, um, or some of my, or not, not actually not Carcosa. I don't know why I'm looking at it. Some of my favorite investigators come out of Dunwich. Hey, Infectious Zombie, how's it going? We're talking Arkham Horror on the Lord of the Rings stream. I love these trap cards. I, I really want to try a all lore, an all lore uh, monosphere deck with just diving right into traps. Because that, that, oh my gosh, that seems so fun. And then our gray card is well equipped. You discard the top two cards of your deck. You may attach one attachment card discarded this way. By this effect to an eligible dwarf character in play interesting interesting um i kind of really like that because we have a lot of ways to manipulate that top those top cards um of the deck with stargazer and Celeborn. no 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 i don't remember who i'm thinking of now um wait but we can, you can definitely manipulate it enough to get like Citadel plate out there. So, you know, it's a four cost for zero now. And then I love dwarfs. And so that makes me want to dance back and try some dwarfs. Let's look at our cards real quick. So, uh, Keldara, she can put into play up to two spirit. Uh, allies if you discard her actually first let's check out what this card is called the five cost card uh fortune or fate choosing a hero in any player's discard pile put that hero back into play sweet okay so we want to go high cost allies because unless if you're not pulling her back with fortune or fate then that's one thing but if you are then the high cost allies uh, need to it needs to exceed five and probably more. I would I would probably want to value that at at least six or seven. So Northern Tracker is a really good choice. Um, Damron is a pretty good choice. Damrod. You know what? I mm. oh ooh, uh, the shipwright could be interesting because if you're running only a spirit, a mono spirit, then the shipwright has three. I guess now two. 
uh, to willpower. So that, that could be kind of interesting. You know, I'm not I'm not seeing I I'll, I'll play her. I'll play her just to try. But I, I'm more interested in this this mono lore. So we got Faramir now. Um, run it with uh, Mel Milrond. And <laughs> I mean Elrond. Or actually Aragorn. Let's go back and let's play with some Aragorn stuff. Barrier is always really good. We have so many traps now though, which is awesome, which is really, really cool. So our traps, we got Ethelian Pit. We can target things in the staging area. We had, we had another new one. Oh yeah, Ranger Spikes. Uh, so if I'm attached, attach Ranger Spikes and they get minus two. So you can just, oh yeah, Ranger Spikes, Ethelian Pit, and uh, this new one, what is it called? Uh, poison Stakes. And just like, that's that'd be crazy. You want a copy of Lord of the Rings base set from you? And you, you think you'll be able to finally take it for a dress charge tomorrow. Nice. I've been watching videos to see how to play and deck build since then. That's awesome. Oh, dang it. I, I've i been procrastinating. I filmed my first playthrough. Like, I did one for Marvel where I did, like, very methodical playthrough of the first game. Um, and I did that for Lord of the Rings, but I haven't been able to edit and post it yet. But... Oh my gosh, tell us how it goes. Tell, tell us how it goes. Um, because I'm really excited. I love hearing when new people dive into it. Um There is a video on our on my YouTube with me, Istari, and D20, where we talk about how like kind of the flow of the game, which that is the hardest part. And then also in the there's a pinned message in the how does this work section of the Discord. That has a really good flow chart that I suggest keeping up to walk you through all the phases of Lord of the Rings. Because that's that's the hardest part about Lord of the Rings, I think, is understanding when things can be done. And that's just hard. That's just tough. Uh, those first quests can be rough, but if you're doing research like that, you should be fine. Yeah. Um, I will also say that the first quest and the second quest are more indicative of what the game can be. The third quest, which is Escape from Dol Gador, is still one of the more intense and unfair quests that the game has to offer over the 10 years total. So, especially solo. So, I... I I think I did win. I I don't actually remember if I won or not. All I know is that of that quest, I've played it probably 20 to 25 times and I may have won win. And I, th I may not have even won. I may have just given up and continued on. So that last quest in the core box, try it, but it's don't, don't judge the game by it. Hey, magic moose moo. How's it going? Cheers. Oh my goodness. We got so many cool cards now. I love this game. Uh, I really want to play with Faramir. Yeah, th this is a... This will be a... I think Mono Lore could work out pretty well. Do the older expansions get easier with newer cards available to you? Um, yes. Yes. I would say yes. Um, and it's not necessarily a power creep issue. I think one of the other, and I, I'm going to use the word issue just because my vocabulary is not big enough to understand a better word to use in this situation. One of the issues with Lord of the Rings is you're tied to 50 cards. And so, especially just in the core set, um, is power creep with the correct term? I don't think so. I don't think so because the cards are not more powerful. The cards are more versatile. And so you have more cards that can handle different situations. And that's what Lord of the Rings does really well in their deck building and in their expansion so far. Is that while yes, there are a couple of cards that are more powerful and have power crap just a little bit. I think it's more you get more um, cards that spit a or fit a specific niche and you're like okay now i can solve this problem that this quest is throwing at me and the future expansions or actually all the quests in this game require you to be very diligent and deck build specifically for that quest which i love and some people hate 
with that being said um going back to the 50 card issue quote issue um it's max 50 min 50 you're running 50 cards especially with the core set you're throwing in a lot of cards that you don't really need or are not solving problems that the current quest is throwing at you and so you have a lot of dead weight in your deck which mitigates what you can draw which is actually beneficial and that's why with the expanded card pool you can throw more cards in that can solve specific problems either better or slightly worse than cards that you currently have and so you just have more options it's not it's not more powerful cards it's more options of cards so and so far i i've loved that outside of actually i'll show you outside of one of the heroes that i just ran so like in the the quest that i just ran these were the heroes i'm 30 ish quest into the into my progression play Theodred's from the core box. Frodo is from one of the first couple expansions. Maybe the first expan... No, I think we got Bilbo first. Um, and then Glorifendel is um, one of the cards that I, I think is probably a little bit overcranked. Glorifendel is, is really, really strong. And I struggle to not throw him in decks. And then like you have a couple cards like Elrond is really, really good. But like I, I'm still running like core set cards just because they're that good actually now that i think about it honestly i think some of the core cards are probably if they came out later it, they would be explained away by power creep like steward of gondor um a test of will those types of cards in the core set are incredibly powerful that make it in almost every single one of my decks and so <laughs> so if anything, I think the cards probably get a little bit less powerful, but then you have more tools. You have that specialized wrench instead of the, the universal wrench that you're trying to tighten down something with. I love this game. I love this game so much. This game works on so many levels and I will like, usually what I do is I like, will read through kind of what this scenario is and then I'll think about it for a week and build decks in my head try and figure out different and unique combinations and like this last scenario that i just played is actually a fairly good example of this because i ran a card that i've had for 15 20 games right i'm opening a pack every time i win a game that i had never played and i played because it was excellent in the scenario in this situation so ah, sorry rant over <laughs> but hmm. cool Alrighty, so i yeah okay so i think i have time i'm going to go ahead and in the stream i'm going to try and film a video and then i got lunch and then i'm going to head off to uh see the family so thank you all so very much for hanging out if you do celebrate the holidays around this time happy holidays if you don't have a great fantastic rest of your week i will see you all next week um probably in the next stream is going to be monday and that's that's going to be it's probably going to be a Marvel stream. And so we'll figure out what the uh, what that looks like then. Thank you, Uncle Dazzle. Thank you all for hanging out. See you around. Have a good one. Peace.